Hi everyone. Hello, 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 hello. How you doing? How? Hi, hi, hi. This is my last live show on this channel. I'm gonna start doing it on my other platforms that's not this channel because it's a waste. So enjoy it while it lasts because I'm not getting really paid for any of these things. I don't know how many times I gotta tell you guys that I am not getting paid for anything. Good, in e good evening, Gladys. Look like you're one of the first to comment. Let's hope you won't be the last. I'm seriously freestyling this entire broadcast. I'm just trying to get this over here. But I'm seriously freestyling this entire... I said podcast. <laughs> I mean this live show. <laughs> I didn't mean podcast. I meant to say live show. Hi. How y'all doing? Hi, Just Be Real Purple. I hope y'all ready. I hope y'all got your whatever it is that you have before you go to bed because it's... I'm going through every page of this document because I've noticed no one has gone through the pages. No one has done that. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to go through the pages because no one is doing it. Why isn't no one doing it? So, yeah, your girl got you. But before we get started, here's your trigger warning. Okay, let's play that again. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I deeply research all of my information. All right, fantastic. Okay, so here's your second part of the trigger warning. This is a trigger warning in this video I may be talking about or showing. Yeah, it's definitely going in and out, in and out. So trust me, they're going to try to stop me from talking about this. Trust me. But just bear with me here. Bear with me here. This oh. is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. All right, fantastic. Okay. That's all I needed from now. I just want you to get the trigger warning because I don't want any of you to be um, traumatized from what I'm seeing here. Um, I definitely don't want that. I definitely do not want that. Because what I'm showing is, def is definitely graphical. I'm going to show you every bit of this case and trust me it's yeah i hope you guys are ready for it can you yes <laughs> fair use yes um you guys can hear me correct just want to make sure you guys can hear me okay i'm assuming you can hear me so i'm gonna pull up the document bear with me here Now, this is definitely for adults only. There's no children that should be in here. No children. Okay? I don't want any children in the house. Et all. So, if there's any children, please leave the room. Okay? 
Please leave the room. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's good. All right, that should be good for you guys. Bam. All right, here we go. Are right, you ready? We're going to start from the beginning here. Now, I'm freestyling. This is not ple ple This is not pre-planned or anything of the nature. You know, m most of my other uh, live shows, I pre-make, I pre-everything. This is not going to be one of those shows. Okay? All right, we're starting here. Okay? Ronnie Jones, plaintiff versus Shy Combs, Justin Dior Combs, Ethiopia Ha, but I think her name is Hi Hot Nabrian. Hot, I'm just gonna say Habernabrian because I, I don't, I'm not English or British. Lucian Charles Grange, Christina Karam, Chalice Recording Studios, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group. Combs, Global Enterprises, John and Jane Doe's, ABC Corporations. Okay, so that's what we have here. Trigger warning. This document contains highly graphic information of, a, of an actual nature, including SA. Additionally, there are graphic images of the aftermath of a shooting, redacted images of sexual intercourse. I said it, sorry. <laughs> redacted images of minors, ex-workers, and prostitutes. Details of ex trafficking and illegal distribution of guns and drugs. So, again, please be aware. Okay? Again, no children. So, if you have kids in the house, they need to go somewhere. Okay? No children. Fantastic. All right. So we're going to start here. We already got the plaintiff. El -ra, da, 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 we already got that already. Okay. So we got here jurisdiction and venue. This court has personal blah, 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 blah. We don't need to hear all that. And then the parties. Plaintiff Rodney Jones is American artist and music producer. Mr. Jones resides in the states of New York and California. So apparently he has residents both in New York and California. Um... It says here, Defendant Sean Combs is a rapper and record executive popularly known by his stage names Puff Daddy, Puffy, P. Diddy, Diddy, Brother Love, or Love, or Mr. Combs, and so on and so forth with gazillion alias. Um, came to fame in the early 1990s with his record label, Bad Boy Records. He, he rose to prominence in the music and entertainment industry over the decades and is regularly referred to as a hip-hop mogul. Mr. Combs resides at 200 South. Just to let you know, they're going to be... Sh considering this is public knowledge, this is public knowledge, so it's not really something I could hide because it's literally public, public form. So they definitely have his address up there, but he, I'm sure he got guards anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, resides, which you see there in Beverly Hills. That's a picture, the latest picture of Sean Combs there. I didn't even know he had missing hair there. So I don't know. I guess he put implants there or something. So apparently he has implants, I'm assuming. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't even know he losing hair right there. So that's a news flash to me. So anyway, defendant Dior Combs is the son of Mr. Combs and Misa Hilton, which is this gentleman here. Okay. Hmm. Um, Jay Combs was born on November 30th, 1993. Jay Combs is a producer and an actor. He has appeared on TV series like Catfish, the TV show Wild and Out and Hip Hop Squares. Defendant Justin Dior Combs resides in blah, 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 blah. And then we got Defendant Lucy and Charles Grange is the CEO of Defendant Universal Music Group. Defendant Lucy and Charles Grange resides in blah, 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 blah. This is Lucy and Charles Grange. If you just saw my last, last live show, I pretty much pointed that out for you. Okay, and this is defendant Ethiopia Hapnabrian is the former CEO of defendant Motown Records, the parent company of defendant Love Records. Defendant Hapnabrian resides at 13701 Riverside and blah, 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 blah. I should have said her address. I'm sorry. Um, that's her. Now, she is the former CEO of Motown Records. 
um, Lucien Grange, he is the CEO of Universal Music Group. So he is, and she was the former. So former, current, okay? And then we have defendant Christina Karam is the chief of staff to Sean Diddy Combs. This is the lady who I showed you guys. I don't know if y'all remember. I put on my um, committee chat. She was the one that was seen with Jay-Z at the Lakers game. Let me pull that over here for you guys. Okay, this is her right here. See? She was the one seen at the Lakers game, the last Lakers game. This is her with Jay-Z. I don't know why the chief of staff of Sean Combs is seen there. Might want to check my community chat out, but that's her. She was seen at the Laker game with uh, Jay-Z. So I don't know if that means that he does not um, agree with the charges against Sean Combs. I'm assuming that's what that means. That, you know, he don't agree with it because he's cozying up with this lady here. Christina Karam, chief of staff to Sean Diddy Combs. This is her. You can check it on my community chat. I'll bring it over one more time, just in case some of you didn't see that. Okay, see? That's her right there. See? That's her. It's the same lady. Oops, sorry about that. Anyway, this is the same lady. We're going to put that over there. All right, here we go. Bam. Okay, so this is the same lady who works with Sean Combs that was seen at this game. See if I can put it side by side a little bit. There we go. This is the same lady right here. See? Chilling with Jay-Z. That speaks volumes. It's, it's, I'm getting the vibe that he don't believe all that crap. Uh, about Sean Combs. Despite the ample amount of evidence, he must not believe it because he's still cozy enough with the chief of staff who's all over this filing, okay? So that's crazy. So you have Christina Karam, the chief of staff of, to Sean Diddy Combs, defended Chalice Recordings as a popular recording studio located da-da-da. Anyways, and then has the address to the Motown Records and the, the Universal Music Group and da-da-da-da. We're just going to skip through all that. Okay, and this give a backstory of Rodney Little Rod Jones. It says Rodney Little Rod Jones Jr. is from the Windy City, Chi Town. He was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Mr. Jones is the second oldest son and fourth child out of nine siblings. Mr. Jones comes from a long line of music influencers, and also says Mr. Jones started playing instruments at the age of five. He began playing drums in church. At the age of thirteen, he picked up playing the guitar from 13 to present day mr jones has taught himself to play over 13 instruments okay and moving on here mr jones consider a music prodigy his talents have led him to produce and create commercial marketplace for music that has recorded by some of the most prestigious and highly acclaimed artists in the music history throughout the duration of his career Mr. Jones has worked the south side of Chicago music scene playing with the following legendary great greats. Chicago Ma well, George, I'm sorry, Georgia Mass Choir, Donald Lawrence, the Clark Sisters, and Smokey Norfolk. Now, on or about August 2022, Mr. Jones received a call from Mr. Combs requesting that he produce several songs on a rhythm and blues album titled The Love Album Off the Grid. Never heard of the album. Don't know if it's even out there never heard of it never freaking heard of it mr jones agreed and his life has been detrimentally impacted every since well ever since and here are a summary of events remember this is a trigger warning make sure there aren't any kids in the room because i'll be showing you graphical pictures that you see all the time on youtube so please beware okay now from september 2022 to November 2023, Mr. Jones produced nine songs on Mr. Combs' love album, okay? Mr. Jones lived with Mr. Combs for months at a time, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events, okay? 
Mr. Jones resided at Mr. Combs' residence located in Los Angeles, California, New York City, and Miami, Florida. So apparently Mr. Combs have residents located in LA, New York, and Miami. And um, things of that nature. But apparently he rented a yacht. This is Sean Combs. Rented a yacht. And he more than likely docked or anchored or whatever at the U.S. Virgin Islands. Far away from civilization. Only people who dock over there is when they're trying to hide a lot of crap. Now, and it says this, throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones witnessed experience and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love Album. The claims raised in this complaint have been corroborated through witnesses' statements, video slash audio recordings, and images that Mr. Jones has in his possession. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly on several occasions. Mr. Combs took Mr. Jones' cell phone and began recording himself. So apparently Sean Combs took the phone, was like, oh, give me the phone, let me just go ahead and record myself right quick. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So this is, this is Sean Combs recording himself. So he was, ugh, the man is sick. That's all I gotta say about that. This is him recording himself. I don't know why he felt the need to do that. But again, only a narcissist person will go to these extreme measures to be captured on camera and do these malicious things while he's on camera. Okay. Which I never understand in a million fucking years. But again, we are talking about Sean Combs. Okay. Anyway, um, moving right along here. Uh, let's see here. Where did I leave off at? Okay. Mr. Combs, blah, blah, blah. We got that. On several occasions, he took his cell and recorded. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. So apparently, uh, Mr. Jones have ample amount of crazy evidence to lynch, to lynch. Sean Combs. This is this is what is being told. So he has all this evidence. Oh, it came out in September. Well, I didn't hear about it, but it must not have been great then. But then again, don't take my word for it because there's a lot of new people who are hot right now that I have never heard of. But I don't pay attention to the music um, scene that much anymore. I'm so in survival mode. I don't get your chance to lay back and listen to the new sound. So... It is what it is. What can I say? I'm a slave to making money and not being rich, apparently. That is no problem because I know it's a lot of people weren't doing it. It's not even that graphical, honestly, so I don't know why they weren't doing it. It's all fuzzed out anyway, and it's public knowledge, and they show more graphical things on YouTube anyway. So anyway, getting back to the point here. So he apparently, Mr. Jones, has all of these graphical images and footages and all that stuff. Hold on for a second. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so, yeah, so he has, he has video evidence. So this is really, really great. He has literally video evidence of all of this. So Mr. Jones has secured irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms, the display and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms. So he has all of this evidence, which I'm going to show you today, okay, and get it over. This is my last live show I'm doing here because I'm, I'm tired of being a slave to this channel and I'm not making any money. I'm done. So Mr. Combs providing lace. I know I said that in the beginning, but I am seriously done. I'm my mother, whatever, great. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to post on my Patreon, which you can find the link below. I'm done. And my Twitch. I would eventually do it on Facebook and they stopped procrastinating. TikTok, I don't know. They've been procrastinating on TikTok too, but I'm moving elsewhere. I'm so done with this. Because I'm consistently hitting the brick wall. FBI is not helping me. But then again, if they get paid by people like Mr. Combs and stuff, who can count on them anyway? So anyway, so Mr. Combs 
providing lace alcohol beverages to I mean he's been lace remember he's known for providing lace alcoholic beverages to minors and ex workers at his home in California, New York and the Virgin Islands and Florida. Okay? So he is providing all of this to his his to minors. And he provides ex workers in his various locations. And Mr. Jones is not the only person who admitted to this. Now, Mr. Combs, Chief of Staff Christina Karam, also known as KK, instructed, I mean, this is the girl. The girl I was, that I just showed you? This, this chick here. Her. The one who's hanging with Jay-Z courtside just the other day at the last Laker game? Her. 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 Hanging with Jay-Z. And as you can see, she's with Jay-Z because her body is kind of turned toward Jay-Z. Somebody asked in the comment section on Instagram, how you know they're together? Look, her body is leaning toward him. Not to this guy, but him. So trust me, she's there with Jay-Z. Which is saying a lot for his character. Anyway, so that chick there, okay? That chick there, she was instructing her staff to retrieve drugs so she can provide it to Mr. Combs for his consumption. So she was providing the drugs, telling them where to go, putting it in the drinks, doing all this for her boss, Sean Combs. Now, Kristen Combs drugging and sexually assaulting a woman. So this is Kristen Combs. Okay, this is one of his sons who's accused of drugging and actually assaulting. Go ahead and share. Just be real. Thank you, everybody. Share, share, share. I want everybody to see this. This is my last live show, and I'm revealing everything. Go ahead and share, 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 share. Let them see this, because no one's showing this, even though you can find it online, but they're just running through it. They're not showing you anything. I'm going to show you, okay? And once it's off here, I'm going to put it on my Patreon, because they may not approve this. So there you go, okay? Here we go. Getting back to this, this little thing here, okay? Okay, now. Mr. Combs, now remember her, his son, we, we just heard about Justin Combs, we heard about Justin Combs, his son, now it's Christian Combs, that's the brown dark skinned boy, um, let me see if I can pull up a picture of his son Christian Combs, now both of these boys, they have no respect for women, but considering their guardian and their role model, we can understand why, we can understand why they don't have any respect for women, look who their role model is, okay, so here's Kristen Combs. That's him. He's known for being rude to servers, waiters. He's known for hitting people and just acting like he's the god of whatever. His name is Combs, so they should bow down to him. This is how Sean Combs is raising his children to be. Okay? This is, this is Christian Combs. And y'all know how uh, Justin Combs look. Okay? So, so you know how you look and you have that image in your mind, okay? Now, he was accused of drugging and sexual assault on a woman, which he has been accused of several times. Mr. Combe detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes. Now, here is the T about Bishop T.D. Jakes, the missing puzzle piece that you and I were trying to bat our heads against. We're going to see what the relationship between Bishop T.D. Jakes and Sean Combs really is, okay? This will determine if Bishop T.D. Jakes is innocent or not. Okay. Now, Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. So it looked like he was using Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften his image. So he was using him, having him do sermons, going to his churches, taking pictures. He was using Bishop T.D. Jakes' image to soften his image. Okay. This may be a plus for Bishop T.D. Jakes, although other witnesses have accused Bishop T.D. Jakes of doing a lot of malicious things. But this particular one is making him look good since Sean Combs was just using him. So all those pictures we saw was just Sean Combs getting, let's say, image recovery mode. You know, taking a picture with this person to make me look like I'm, you know, changing. I'm a changed man. That's what he was doing. Okay. Now, young Miami's cousin and or assistant... Sexual assaulting Mr. Jones. Okay. So, Young Miami, that's uh, Sean Combs' current girlfriend, 
Just in case you guys don't know who that is, let me go ahead and bring her up here right quick. Okay, remember this is all freestyle. There's no script. You and I are doing this freestyle live right now. Okay. Here's young Miami. See, that's her. She's new, she's Shaq Holmes' new Cassie. Bam, there she is. There we go. That's young Miami. That's her. You're going to see her a lot in this um little thing here. Okay. Yeah. Young Miami's cousin and her assistant sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. So she was over there sexually assaulting Mr. Jones, even though she's supposed to be Sean Combs' girl. But we know how that whole thing rolls. And y'all know how actor Cuba Gooding Jr. look. I don't have to bring up no picture of him. So actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Okay? Yeah, sexually harassing and assaulting Mr. Jones, which I said and showed you on my last live show. Okay? Rapper redacted on Mr. Combs Jacques consorting with underage girls ex-workers and here it is this is what the tiktok people were only saying rb singer redacted in mr combs los angeles i can't even speak in mr combs los angeles home consorting with underage girls and sex workers so rb singer okay now on now we get into the chalice recording studio shootings there was a shooting that happened in 2022 if you don't remember it don't worry there's a screenshot in this filing of this shooting Okay, it's get it gets darker after this. It gets very darker after this. Very dark. Now, on or about September 12, 2022, Mr. Combs held a writers and producers camp at Chalice Recording Studio at 845 Highland Avenue, Los Angeles. I didn't even have to say the address, but anyway, present at this camp were Mr. Combs, his son Justin Combs, and Justin's friend named G. Okay, now hold on to that G name. No problem, no problem, you guys, no problem. Mr. G is the 30-year-old tall African male. Okay? He's 30 years old, and he's Negro. He's a Negro. And Negroes and African Americans are the same. I saw a video where they were saying we're different. No, that is the African men trying to separate themselves from American people, which they should not do because we're either, you know, I'm not going through the whole history lesson, but we're all the same. They need to... Chill with that mess. Anyway, in addition to these individuals, other musicians were present at the camp. Now, this is at the Child's Recording Studio back in September 22. So, this is two years ago. Okay. Now, this is supposed to have been some kind of, I don't know, camp for writers and stuff. So, this writer has spoken to several musicians who attended the camp. One evening during this camp, Mr. Combs, Jay Combs. Okay. That's, so, that's Sean Combs and his son, Justin Combs. And G, which is Justin Combs' boy, or a friend or whatever, they got into a heated conversation. So G got into a heated conversation with Justin Combs, who also think he's a god, who has no respect for women. None of his sons have no respect for women. None. They treat women like dirt and staff like dirt because they are gods. They are Combs. This is what he raises boys to be, just like him. So he get into an argument with Mr. Combs and Jay Combs, and they both been drinking. And G, who was the friend, they got into a heated conversation. That conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom adjacent to where Mr. Jones was sitting. So Mr. Jones, he's sitting out there adjacent, you know, near the restroom. He's just inhaling all this stuff. He's one of those people who be there, but you forget is even there. My daughter has that capability. She, I told her she should be a spy. She could be in a room and you forget that girl's in the room. Mr. Jones has that gift where he's in the room, but you forget he's there. So they arguing and they fighting. It's getting really heated. He's back there recording and just taking it all in. They forget he's even there. Apparently they forget he's there a lot. Mr. Jones was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when gunshots start ringing out. Mr. Jones, because hearing multiple shots, bam, 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 in the bathroom. That crap echoes. Okay? Seriously. I'm not even done yet. Now, this writer spoke with several employees of the yacht rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands who personally witnessed defendant Quaram, that's the lady I showed you who's hanging with Jay-Z the other day, just the other day at the Lakers game, instruct her staff, Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Bond, spike bottles of champagne with ecstasy. So she's, 
she should be in jail right now because she's telling her staff to make sure you spike these bottles with ecstasy. This is what she is telling people. But yet she's free sitting courtside with freaking Jay-Z. A complaint is forthcoming. He is a Philip. They talk about other people too. The other person who uh, was taking advantage of girls who was also at this party. Yeah. Apparently, y'all know who this is. This is, y'all know who this is. <laughs> okay. Okay, he is Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. You know who that is. Put in the comment section for other people who know who, who don't know who that is, okay? Nicki Minaj's old boyfriend. Put in the comment section so they can know who it is. And this is uh, another person who was around, apparently, who also, you know, was accused of assaulting or whatever. He is a Grammy Award winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bajon billionaire. And that's Bajon billionaire is Brianna. And R&B singer is Chris Brown. We already know that. No one's stupid. Blah, 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 blah. Moving right on. Now, Mr. Jones immediately went into... Now, now remember, he heard boom, 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 boom from the bathroom. Okay? After Mr. Jones, which is Sean Combs, his son, and um, his son boy was in the bathroom at the heated conversation, you hear boom, 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 boom in the bathroom. Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock. Like, what the fuck? And feared that he would be shot next. Who wouldn't? Mr. Jones genuinely believed that he would be shot through the door due to how close it was. Because he was just sitting there and it was like boom, boom, boom. So the shock was crazy. And after the shoot ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom like, what the hell just happened? When the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and Jay Combs exited. So he's exiting with his son. His fucking son. Uh, I'm sorry. G, he go, here's where it get really twisted. G, who was lying on the restroom floor in fetal position, holding his stomach and bleed. A fetal position. That means knees to the chest. Okay? Bleeding out of his leg and hip area. So they beat his ass in there and they shot him. He was bleeding out of his leg and hip area. Everyone stood around looking upon G like, what the hell is going on? Frustrated by the lack of aid, okay, to G. Mr. Jones dropped everything. He ran to G and immediately began placing pressure on G's wound shot. Well, I'm just fast forwarding ahead here, but I'll just say we're here. Wound to his stomach. Because no one else helped him. Because everybody at that party, you know, you don't help anyone who Mr. Combs killed. And there's no, or he shot or whatever. There's no telling how many people he done shot and thrown over the balcony or boats or rivers or whatever. Who knows? No one said. No one says anything. Everybody's all hush hush and scared here, scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing new there. So he applies pressure to his gunshot wound. As he was applying pressure on his stomach, Mr. Jones realized that G was gushing blood from another area, his leg and hips. So they just, oh gosh. Over a heated conversation, they shot him multiple times in the stomach and his leg slash hip. So he decided to lift G and place him to sit on the toilet. Mr. Jones asked the crowd to call the ambulance. Mr. Jones asked the crowd to call the ambulance. They're standing around watching, but no one's calling no ambulance. They just stand around watching. They train to not say anything. Everybody's in a state of shock and scarce because you got Jones. You got, I'm sorry, you have the Comb people, the Combs clan, so to speak. Shooting people and acting like godfathers and mafias and whatever. So Mr. Jones lifted G and brought him to the ambulance at the studio front. Yeah. So he brought it. He licked the lift them up and brought him to the ambulance who was sitting out in front. At this time, Mr. Combs and Justin, they disappeared to another part of the studio. So they blah, 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 make all this commotion like that godfathers or leaders of some freaking pack and disappeared. Oh, I'm not done yet. Mr. Combs gave strict. I mean, this is Sean Combs. When we talk about Mr. Combs, it's Sean Combs, okay? Or P Diddy Combs, whatever. Mr. Combs gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced Mr. Jones to lie to police. So he disappeared. He comes back up. And he's like, boo-boo the fool. I don't know what happened. I, I, remember, Sean Combs is a great actor. I think he even got nominated for an award. He's a brilliant actor. Perfect. Oscar worthy. So he asked Mr. Jones to lie to police by telling them that G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. 
even though there were several witnesses who witnessed this shooting, only one person had enough guts to speak up and say this is bullshit. That did not happen. Everybody else didn't say anything. Mr. Combs tell you what happened, you listen. That's that that's the rule. He said you listen. That that's what it is. Okay? Here is the internet. Posting of man shot outside party at Hollywood recording studio. So remember what I just told you? He was shot in the bathroom, but Mr. Combs told Jones that he was shot, out, shot outside the studio in Hollywood. And guess what they ran at the local news at CBS? Man shot outside party at Hollywood recording. <laughs> wow. Seriously. I am flabbergasted by this whole fucking thing. You guys, y'all still hear me here? Tell me if you still hear me here. Okay. I don't know because y'all not saying anything. Anyway, so Mr. Jones has several corroborating witnesses who spoke with this writer anonymously due to fear of retaliation from Mr. Jones. Because, you know, Sean Combs have a habit of you know, making people turn up missing. They have agreed to speak publicly with subpoena. So it's like, I'm not going to freely talk to people. But I will speak to anyone if you subpoena me, which means you make them by a court of law. Okay. Now, Mr. Jones has the clothing he wore that day in Belize and may still have the stains of DNA of G's blood. The following are screenshots of the aftermath of the restroom where G shot. So he shot. He took a picture. Now, here's the thing. Someone took a picture. So it says the following are screenshots of the aftermath of the restroom where G was shot by either Mr. Combs or J. Combs. So someone, they don't know who shot him, but we know who took this picture. See this? This is what happened. So he was laying on this floor in a fetal position. And this is where Jones picked him up and set him on a toilet. There's the evidence right there. But Mr. Combs told people to tell the cops that he was shot outside the studio. This blood stain should still be on this floor, even though they cleaned it. On the purple light, it should be. Who knows? There's the pictures right there. Now, clearly G was not shot outside of the studio, as Mr. Combs instructed his team to report to law enforcement. So they lied. Mr. Combs, the defendant, this is uh, LR, Mr. Da, 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 da. Anyway, provided private security for the writers, kept at defendant CRS. So, yeah. So, he provided security for the writers and anybody who can elaborate his story. Are we even shocked by this? I mean, for real. The security was Pararis and lackluster at best. I mean, they were, whatever. The fact that Mr. Combs and Jay Combs were allowed to enter CRS with guns, that's the recording studio, with guns. And those guns were not confiscated by security. So they was able to walk through like God. Like, who cares if I got an Uzi under my shirt? Who cares if I got knives and stuff and ecstasy? Who cares? I am Mr. I'm the Combs family. We're the Combs. We're mafia. We're deep. We got... Gangs, we got blah, 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 blah. They walk through. Everybody else is checked at the freaking gate. These fools, they walk through. Because they combs. Bam. So, combs. They walk through. They're not confiscated by security, which is a clear breach of duty by Mr. Jones defending da 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 da, da and other attendees of this writer's camp. So this writer's camp was not necessarily a writer's camp. It was just his excuse to get a bunch of brothers in a room and a bunch of people in a room to do crazy shit. Now, as a result of this shooting, Mr. Jones is severely... I will be severely traumatized after this. For real. I would be mortified. And I would probably be quiet. Like, no, I won't be quiet because I'm not a quiet person. Nope, I will seek justice and people know me. I'm not being quiet about this. I can't. In order for me to sleep on that, I can't go to bed knowing all this, man. No. 
So Mr. Jones now suffers from PTSD, severe anxiety, depression, and insomnia. And I don't blame him because goddamn. You sitting outside, not even feet away from the bathroom, and you hear la da 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 and then bap, 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 bap. And you go in there, and this dude is freaking curled up in the fetal position because he was shot. And then the godfather of crime and his little godfather son comes out and tell people, you say this. Say this. And they say, yes, master. We say this. Whatever you say. Yes, master. We say this, whatever you say, and they say it because he's fucking Sean Combs, okay? He's a god, which he loves calling himself. So throughout his time living with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching by his buttocks by Mr. Combs. These events took place in LA, New York, Florida. That's where his residence and he, he, I'm assuming he has a place in the um, Virgin Islands now. So I stand correct. I thought he just had like a yacht docked somewhere up there. So far I'm getting a yacht. He may have up there somewhere. I, I don't really know. So we just say this place, okay? United States Virgin Islands, okay? Now in addition, <sighs> this is getting crazy. In addition to the unsolicited, unauthorized touching, Mr. Jones was forced by Mr. Combs to work in Mr. Combs' bathroom as Mr. Combs walked around naked. Let me say that again. In addition to unsolicited and unauthorized touching, Mr. Jones was forced by Mr. Combs to work in Mr. Combs' bathroom as Mr. Combs walked around freaking naked in a clear glass enclosure. So, it's not the first time... Uh, Sean Combs walk around naked. There's a video floating around TikTok where he was playing golf with that uh, that dude. I forgot that big fat dude um, who did a song with uh, Jay Z and Beyonce, and he has a son. He always talking about his son and stuff. I forgot his name. Anyway, they they was playing golf. Sean Combs, I'm assuming, is the only child. Had a little temper tantrum. Okay, had a little temper tantrum. He was already half naked. Playing fucking golf. He got mad like, uh, duh, 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 duh. he ran around having a fit. Uh, duh, 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 like a little five year old. Uh, duh, duh, duh. And I was like, Khaled, Khaled, DJ Khaled, yeah. And I was like, what the hell? For real, what are you, two? Seriously, this is what's going on, my kid. This is crazy. Okay, so, moving right along here. So, he was walking around naked, but showing, you know, things swinging from left and right. You know, who cares? I mean, so what? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Now remember, Mr. Call, Mr. Jones is straight. He's a heterosexual. He's a Christian man. Mr. Jones is uncomfortable with Mr. Combs' advances and express his discomfort to Mr. Jones, the chief of staff. Remember, the chief of staff I showed you was sitting courtside with freaking Jay-Z, Christina Karan, who's known as KK. Now KK responded to Mr. Jones' complaint with, you know Sean would be Sean. She didn't say, oh, let me go tell Sean to cover himself because it's making people uncomfortable. He said, Sean will be Sean and just let it go. What you want me to do? He is the man. He is the God of all gods. Let him walk around Nick with his thing swinging from left to right. It is what it is. So KK also attempted to downplay Mr. Combs' groping of Mr. Jones' butt and Gentiles. So Mr. Combs was playing with his butt, you know, messing with his thing, you know, he's naked, horny. Yeah. As friendly horseplay. Stated that those acts were Mr. Combs' way of showing that he likes you. So his chief of freaking staff, again, sitting courtside with Jay-Z, is telling Mr. Jones that it's his way of showing that he likes you, he likes you. So this Karam chick was literally, <laughs> she was uh, Ghislaine, Ghislaine to Epstein. So Combs is Epstein, Karam is Ghislaine. That's who these people are, okay? It just showed he likes you. It's just a little horseplay, you know, it is what it is. Despite these assurances on several occasions when Mr. Jones began to undress and walk around his house naked, KK would say, okay, I'm leaving now. Like, okay, you're not going to do something about this? She's like, no, I'm leaving now. I'm gone. And she would disappear. Now, KK hypocrisy is breathtaking at best or enabling at worst. Mr. Jones believes that KK aided and abated 
Mr. Combs sexually, well, essayed of him and was working with Mr. Combs to groom him into accepting homosexual relationships. So he was, she was trying to groom Mr. Jones to be accepted to Mr. Combs' advances so he can be turned out. Like, if you want to make it, you have to bend over. That's what it is. Bend over, whatever they do. I don't know what they do. I'm sorry. If you want to make your music in the industry, this is what you have to do for me. Because I'm the godfather of music, and you will not get anywhere unless you do this to me. Because I am the godfather of this music industry. I am the king of music. So if you want to make it, do this for me. This is what Sean Combs think of himself. So through his ex, let's just say it, sexually deviant ex, one would say Mr. Combs has a pattern and practice of engaging. No, he didn't want him. He definitely didn't. Exactly, Bob. I'm bringing your comments now. Bob, Bobby Digital. To soften his Exactly. Exactly. And every dog definitely has his day, Maria. Absolutely. So through his sexual deviant acts, one would say Mr. Combs has a pattern and practice of engaging in sexual nefarious activities. This ongoing conduct shows that Mr. Combs cannot be rehabilitated. Which means he's so far gone, it's not even... You can't save him. He has programmed himself to think that what he wants, he gets. He programmed his kids to think what, what you want, you get. And if they can't do it, call me, I'll handle it. Not you can't do this, it's immoral. No, you are Combs, you do what... Yeah, yeah, that's what he teaches sons. And I'm worrying about his daughters amongst all this huge testosterone. And egotistical God complexes. So Mr. Combs was aware that Mr. Jones looked up to idolize music producer Stephen Aaron Jordan, which is who's also called Stevie J. Okay. So again, the beginning to Mr. Combs attempted to groom Mr. Jones into gay. Remember, we left off and him trying to corner him and making moves on him. Now we're getting to the attempted to groom Mr. Jones into engaging in gay sex. Now we're getting a little further with these advancements. Oh, I'm not even done yet, people. I hope you're ready. I hope you got your wine, cookies, whatever, because we are having a long night. This is my last live show, and I'm going out with a bang. Now, Mr. Combs was aware that Mr. Jones looked up to and idolized music producer Stephen Aaron Jordan, who is also known as Stevie J. Stevie J is an American DJ. Record producing television personality. I know he used to be married to um, Faith Evans, who is Biggie Smalls' widow. Yeah, Stevie J was part of the Bad Boy Records production team, The Hitman. In 1997, Stevie J actually won an award, a Grammy Award, for his work on Puff Daddy's debut album. Oh, yeah. Now, throughout the late 1990s, Stevie J produced several artists, including Mariah Carey, Tevin Campbell, Notorious B.I.G., and ended up fucking and marrying his wife, but who cares? One big cesspool, one big pool of sex. <laughs> 112, or 112, Joe Desi, Faith Evans, Jay-Z, and Eve, and I'm sure it goes on and on. Okay? Stevie J was one of the producers on the Love album that I never heard. Despite it coming out September 23rd, thank you, Mia, I never heard it. Mr. Combs used access to Stevie J. Now, remember, Stevie J had all these excellent accolades. He worked with the greats. He did this. Da, da, da. He's amazing at his craft. Let's give him his props. So, Sean Combs used his access to Stevie J and his knowledge, his knowledge of Mr. Jones, admiration of Stevie J. Because remember, Mr. Mr. Jones looked up. He's like, I want to be the next Stevie J. I want to do this producing. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to be Stevie J, not knowing who Stevie J really is. Be careful who you idolize. Not knowing who he is. I want to be him. I want to be him. Be careful what you wish for. So he was like, I, I know you like Stevie J. So you're admiration of uh, Stevie J. I got you. I got you. So he used that admiration of Stevie J to groom and entice Mr. Jones into engaging homosexual activity. Mr. I'm not even done yet. He went so far as to share a freaking video of Stevie J. <laughs> yeah. Being, you know what, with a male without a condom. This was done to ease Mr. Jones' anxiety concerning his homosexuality. So he was 
desperately trying to turn him out. Showing him video like Stevie J, your boy, you know, one he idolized. Look what he does. Huh? You like that? Yeah, you like that, right? So according to Mr. Combs, this is the normal practice in the music industry. Look, he was like, look, even Stevie J do it. I mean, it's no big deal. This is what's done. From a quote from freaking Kanye West, it should be called <laughs> gay hip-hop, paraphrasing. Because Kanye said all of them are pretty much gay. This, was Kanye, this is what Kanye West said about hip-hop. Now, Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper. So he also had sex with uh, Stevie J. <sighs> yeah. But he also said he had intercourse with rapper redacted R&B singer redacted in Stevie J. The R&B singer was Usher. Uh-huh. And then, of course, Stevie J. Now, Mr. Combs promised to make sure that Mr. Jones wins producer of the year at the Grammys. He's like, I'll make sure you win producer of the year at the Grammys if you do this to me. Please. I will make you rich. Do this for me, please. He's begging. Probably high on drugs. And please, I'm going to go through this quick because this is so wild. The following, it's, it's fuzzed out. It's fuzzed out, YouTube. It's fuzzed out. Okay. The following are screenshots and video of Stevie J, because he took pictures, of annually being, you know what, by a Caucasian male and Mr. Combs provided to Mr. Jones to get him to say, please do this to me. That's him. This is Stevie J. I'm going to run through a quick screenshot and go back. Pause it. So, in a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj, she performed Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Now, remember, the other person I was talking about, he dated. This is the other two who also engaged with uh, Sherlock Holmes. He is a Philadelphia writer who dated Nicki Minaj. He performed at the Super Bowl and has... Well, y'all know who it is. Hell. That's Stevie J. Yep, that's him. Pause it, look at it, I'm done. Okay, now... We're now to Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Day, 2022. Mr. Jones was in Mr. Combs' house located in Miami, Florida. Young Miami and her female cousin, they were all present. So she bringing reinforcements. Just like uh, Jeffrey Epstein used to use some of his little underage people to bring reinforcements. So young, young Miami is allegedly assisting in trafficking and prostitution. So young Miami and her female cousin, they're all present. Mr. Combs was intoxicated as usual and high on cocaine. He offered it to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones was like, no, and proceeded to walk to the restroom. This is sound like a fucking nightmare. He probably feel like I'm losing my mind here. This is crazy. So while using the restroom, young Miami's cousin burst into the bathroom and began groping Mr. Jones like, hey, babe, what's up? Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs sent them in there to essay him to get him all enticed. They're probably good looking, I'm sure. Now, as she entered the bathroom, she dropped to her knees and began to do you know what to you know what. Mr. Jones pushed her away and exited the bathroom like, what the hell is going on? And left. Young Miami presenting her cousins. This is a, okay, yeah, you know what, whatever. So young Miami cousin did not accept Mr. Jones' rejection and she proceeded to follow Mr. Jones out of the freaking bathroom. Like, y'all crazy. So she started undressing and she attempted to straddle him and have ex with him in the presence of Mr. Combs and his staff like, I know you want me, baby, I know you want me, baby, woo, woo, woo. Getting naked. So she's obviously high on drugs. Like everybody else at this party. And here are the screenshots of this party. Yeah. Oh yeah. It is crazy. It's crazy at this day and age. Nobody should be ashamed who they prefer as mates to groom. I know, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, Jamal, we just going through um Sean Combs' little legal affidavit here. Which is public knowledge. Anybody can see this, but you know. Now, once again, Mr. Jones pushed her off and the following are images from that video from that night. So this is Mr. Jones. 
This is Combs who's high and drunk. Okay, this is the picture. Mr. Jones and Mr. Combs on Thanksgiving Day right before. This is on Thanksgiving, man. I don't believe Thanksgiving is literally a remembrance of butcheries for the Moors, but not Indians. I talked about that before. Go check it out one of my live videos or one of my videos. I'll remember and try to put the link below or at the end of this video when they finish rejecting it. Anyway, so think about this. This is on Thanksgiving. So instead of having a peaceful family meal, he got prostitutes. He got drugs. He got escorts. He got all this crap going on. This is what Sean Combs consider fun. And he's still free. This is bullshit. Okay, so Mr. Jones and Mr. Combs on Thanksgiving Day, right before Combs invited Mr. Jones to the restroom and attempted to force him to take, you know what? This them talking in this little secret room where he does all this with the dirt. Here's young Miami and her cousins. He, these are the ones who was getting undressed. You see these chicks? Who, see, he's sitting on the couch. Mr. Combs sitting there like he's the godfather of all. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm not even done yet. Now, throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was transported from California to New York. So they went to all those various places where you have all this work done. You know, California, New York, Florida, Virgin Islands, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Now, during this time, Mr. Jones was forced to solicit ex-workers and perform ex-ex to, like, to pleasure of Mr. Combs. He was forced at this point. You either do it or you die. You either do it, I'm going to do something to you. You either do it or it's over. You either do it or something is going to be seriously going wrong here. Okay? So he did it. Under force. And considering you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. And he already got you included in prostitution. Uh, attempted homicide. Rape. Drug and abetting, illegal weapon, it goes on and on. So you're the witness of all of this. He got on you now. Yeah. So, what would you do under these circumstances? Because you can die and no one would care. You already got FBI on his belt. <laughs> you know, who cares? You know, you can't, you can't be free. The Guardian's Angels looked after Cassie. She managed to get free and get money. A lot of people don't make it out. Makes you wonder what he got on Jay-Z. So on or about February 4th. Two, this is February 4th. This is fucking February 4th. Literally. Okay. Of last year. Okay. Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to bring prostitutes and ex-workers back to his home in Miami, Florida. So he told you, please bring these ex-workers. I need them. Bring them, please. Please bring them. Please bring them. You have to bring them. Please. I don't care if they're male or female. I don't care. This is Sean Combs begging. So the ex-workers that Mr. Combs forced to Mr. Jones to bring back to his home. There it is. Bam. Boom. On about February 2nd of last year incident, Mr. Jones believes Mr. Combs drugged him. Oh, wow. This is crazy. Would you be able to roll out for real, Maria? I mean, seriously, he got all this stuff and he can easily kill you. Yeah, Diddy or Freako indictment, yeah. Diddy sheep, that's exactly what they are, yep. Yep, freak mail, definitely. You guys are not lying. No, he didn't want it. Okay, so on about February 2nd, 2023, Mr. Jones believes Mr. Calm drugs him. Mr. Jones recalls waking up naked, dizzy, and confused. So he he brought the workers, but he had no intention on sleeping with him. These workers. I mean, no. He's a Christian man. I'm only here to do a job. Why are you trying to get at me, man? I mean, damn. He's begging him. Seriously. So in order to get Mr. Jones to do anything, he drugged him. So he slipped in Mickey. He waking up dizzy, headache, feeling confused, like, what the hell? And he, and he wake up in bed with two ex-workers and Mr. Combs. So he didn't wake up by himself with these ex-workers and have one big freaking orgy under the substance that was recorded, by the way. He wake up Mr. Combs in the bed with him. He also recalls aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. Here is the picture of him laying next to 
these ex-workers. Ex-workers in bed with Mr. Jones morning after being, you know what? Mm-hmm. There it is. Picture proof and Sean Combs is still free. Yeah. So on a, another occasion in Miami, Florida on Thanksgiving night of 2022, Mr. Combs asked Mr. Jones, the Frost Taylor, to enter the studio bathroom. Now we're still on Thanksgiving. We we don't this is another Thanksgiving night, because apparently Thanksgiving get him acting like crazy. He can't act like a normal freaking family man. He wanna do crazy crap. So Thanksgiving must be a howling night for Mr. Combs. Again, he won't Mr. Jones. So he asked Mr. Jones and D. Frost Taylor to enter the studio bathroom. Like, come in this bathroom right quick, dog. He asked them for a $100 bill because he wanted them to do some cocaine with him. He's like, do you have a $100 bill or something? Because I need this hit. I need this. I need this. I need this. Do you, what you got? What you got? Because you need to sniff some stuff. Yeah. Exactly. You are so right. And I'm not even done yet. Told you. I hope you guys are ready for this. Okay. So Mr. Jones was scared, but luckily he didn't have a $100 bill. So Mr. Combs waited a little later to do his little coke with young Miami. So his girlfriend is also doing a little sniffing. I don't, I don't know what they do. I never smoked cocaine. Ever. Ever. Okay. Never done it. Only thing I know is weed and I haven't done it in... Gosh, decades. I don't even do that. Now, later that evening, he required Mr. Jones to solicit more ex-workers. He's like, now, I, 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 need, I need something. I, I, give me, I don't care if they're male or female. Give me some ex-workers. So he gets some ex-workers from this booby trap on River Located, yada, yada, yada. Mr. Jones did so because right now he got, I mean, look what the fuck's going on. He do it because Mr. Combs forced him to do it. Force him to engage in unsolicited acts with these workers. And there's the proof. Booby trap. Booby trap. Because remember, Sean Comb, he high. He, he's, he's, he's high. He's on drugs. He's like, oh my God, I, I, I need workers. I mean, him in Miami is high as hell. I, I need something. I don't care if it's male or female. I, I just, I, I need something. So as Mr. Jones' ex-workers recruited tools, Mr. Combs provided Mr. Combs with an exclusive bad boy baseball cap. Like, here, here's the cap. Yeah, uh-huh. And required him to wear this when he go to booby trap on this river whatever. As a signal, because he put that on as a signal. Bam. To any ex-worker, he approached that Mr. Combs was in town. Like, Mr. Combs is in town. All your ex-workers... Come with me. I have the sniff. I have whatever they call it. I don't know. I have all this. So he put his hat on. He goes out there. Hookers and prostitutes come running. Who cares? They're male and female. He goes both ways. Mr. Jones recruited them. He did what he was told. Because at this point, he's so knee deep, he can't help it. Mr. Jones had no desire to visit Booby Chap on River. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit any workers on Booby Drive on the River. But Mr. Combs used the power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting ex-workers from Booby Trap on the river. As detailed below, Mr. Combs used many tactics to maintain dominance and control of Mr. Jones. Because right now, he already got a video recording of him having illicit acts with these women. And I'll tell him what he have. So he has the leverage. He has the blackmail. Now do what I say now. That's how it's done for Mr. Combs, apparently. Okay? So, apparently, these workers were accustomed to servicing Mr. Combs and would know that he is in town. So, you got that bad boy's cop, bad boy's cap, and you standing on river, bam, bad boy's in town, hookers come flying out of woodwork. The following Instagram profiles of two ex-workers and Mr. Combs, required by Mr. Jones, has solicited half X at his home in Miami. So these are the X workers that he recruited. This is a little profile on Instagram. They probably called uh, IG models, but they're really prostitutes. That's them. Now, Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit or have set X with these individuals in the previous paragraph. Okay? But, remember that power? Yeah! Mr. Combs used 
his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting sleeping, yeah, with these women. The following is the phone number of another ex-worker that Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to solicit and perform ex acts with, with him at his home. So here it is called, well, you already get that anyway. Now, Mr. Jones had, again, no desire to have acts with these individuals. He didn't want to. I mean, no. God damn, no, man. But, again, that power, that blackmail. He used his power and influence to intimidate him and force Mr. Jones into soliciting and sleeping with these individuals, as you saw above. Mr. Combs used many tactics to maintain dominion and control of Mr. Jones. He promised him a Grammy. Remember, he promised a Grammy. Grammy producer of the year, of the love album. He offered him a quarter of a million dollars to purchase all the instruments. I'll, I'll buy you anything. I'll do anything. I'll give you a quarter of a million dollars. I'll purchase all the instruments you want. I'll do whatever you want. He promised ownership of his 20 fucking million dollars. You know what? <clears throat> 20 million dollar property. At Star Island, he said, I give you my property, I give you a quarter million dollars, I make you Grammy producer of the year. He promised him access to record labels, executives like the Fennis, Lucien, Charles Grange, and this, you know, Ethiopia, Habernabrium. You know, I showed you her early. If you don't, if you're just now going in, go ahead and slide up, okay? Yeah, he promised him all this, like, he's howling drugs. He's really fainting right now. Just do this for me. Get these workers for me, please. Mr. Combs would often switch up his approach. He would go from promising Mr. Jones. I mean, he was just begging Mr. Jones for this. Like, can you do this for me? Please, I'll give you whatever you want to do. Da, 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 da. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to, like, you just do it, do it, do it. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to blow your freaking brains out, man. Just do it. Mr. Jones threatened to eat. And like, seriously, he's high. He's high and he's seriously geeking right now. I grew up around these little crazy people. Okay, he went from "I'll give you the world" to send out "Boy, I'll eat your face, I'll eat your face." Yeah, and inform Mr. Jones that he is willing to. I'll kill your mother. I, I, dude, he's fainting. Okay, this is what he's doing. <laughs> he was like, "I eat your face," and inform Mr. Jones that he is willing to kill his mother, Janice Combs, if he must. In order to get what he wants, so he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. It went from offering to world, offering the world, to cannibalism, to I'm gonna kill innocent people. It got that dark, and we're not even done yet. We're not even done yet. It gets sicker. And he's still free. He's still freaking free. <laughs> they had less evidence for freaking Bill Cosby and freaking R. Kelly. I know, right? It definitely do that, Jamal. And you are right, Deborah. Yes. The man had, yes. A mean dog has two days. And this just goes to show who people like him. Exactly. Ex oh, bam. That's what I was saying. Go. It makes you question his friends. And we're not even done. It gets dark. It gets very dark. Whew. Okay. Now we're at Mr. Combs and Jake Combs. Solicit drugs. Engage and illicit ex ex and minors and ex workers. We are here. Okay. We are here now. Okay, this is where we at. Let's do this. Okay, on or about July, I need to break the breeze right quick. <laughs> on or about July 2nd, 2023 in California, Mr. Combs had a listening party at his home. Remember, we at California, Mr. Combs listening party. He don't have normal listening parties like uh, Kanye West or Beyonce or normal people. You know, you bring out a place, a public place, okay, where they supply. And there's no drug in making, completely clean, partying, listening to music. Yeah, woo-woo. Normal. Normal. 
perfectly innocent. Maybe you're a little drunk, might have to have your girlfriend take you home, but you're drunk to the point you're not, okay, I don't know what the hell's going on. You're just drunk. Normal listening parties. These are Sean Combs listening parties. His goes to a whole nother sick level because he's high on drugs. He's an addict. Okay? Now, present at this party was r and artist, which we know is Usher. Jay Combs, or one of them, I don't know. It could be Usher or Chris Brown, I don't know. Jay Combs and his ex-workers and some underage girls. Yeah. So we have underage girls running around this listening party. Uh-huh. Justin Combs running around acting like he's the godson. Okay. The event began at 7 p.m. Mr. Combs requested female ex-workers and required Mr. Jones to solicit them. So right now he's pimping Mr. Jones now. He said solicit these ex-workers. An hour later, several ex-workers appeared. So these ex-workers running around here, appearing. Hey, Nicole. They, they here now. They running around, mixed in with the underage girls. In addition to these ex-workers, there were at least five women in the crowd that were under the fucking age of 16 years old. So these women, they, all these girls, ex-workers running around here are not of age. They're under the age of 16. Yeah. Mr. Combs forced all the women to drink Lace de Leon liquor. Upon information and belief, Mr. Combs laced the liquor with ecstasy. Well, remember, his chief of staff was also known to instruct the staff to do this to his drinks. Mr. Combs did not... Oh, okay. That answered my question from the live show when I said, did they check identification? Mr. Combs did not check identification of any of these underage girls. Who cares? I don't care how old you are. Who cares? I don't give a damn. Mr. Combs, again, did not check for IDs. Okay? So the presence of these underage women made Mr. Jones very uncomfortable. Like, these are underage girls. Now, what the hell? <sighs> now, put yourself in Mr. Jones' shoes. You go from idolizing and thinking your career is set to... <laughs> says, listen to dating drugs. Aiden and Betty. Trafficking, prostitution, in compliance with a, I don't know, attempted homicide. I mean, it's just going on and on and on now. So now he went from just having a regular gig, getting, you know, maybe two, three months and I'm out, to a nightmare. Now you have underage girls running around this damn party under ecstasy. What the hell? I'm not even done yet. He wanted to leave. He's like, this is crazy. He attempted to leave. Mr. Combs forced him to stay again. You know, he forced him to stay. He attempted to leave and again, he forced him to stay. Mr. Combs went so far. He going to, now here we go. You remember he did before. Mr. Combs went so far as to take Mr. Jones' car keys to prevent him from leaving. Like, you are not going anywhere. Give me these fucking keys. Where are you going? After being forced to drink Lays De Leon shots, Mr. Jones began feeling lightheaded like, what the hell's going on here? What the hell? I mean, seriously, he's lightheaded now. Because he drunk some of those laced drinks. So he's feeling lightheaded. I mean, calls passing out and walking up. I mean, waking up, I'm sorry, at 4 a.m. the following morning, naked with another ex-worker sleeping next to him that I'm sure Mr. Combs freaking recorded. Screenshot of a video from that night is below. Yeah. Oh, do you remember the R&B singer? Apparently, the R&B singer is award-winning R&B singer who had trouble. So it was Chris Brown. So Chris Brown was there. Yeah. So Chris Brown was there. The R&B singer I was telling you about that was Chris Brown. Yeah. So here it is. Remember, he's look. See, see. This is Mr. Jones. Here's the underage ex worker. Underage. He's high. It's heck. This is Mr. Combs, but the underage ex-worker. Here's the underage female. And here's the ex-worker. Yeah, look at that. Here's Justin Combs. With the underage female. Are we seeing this? Yeah. And guess what? Mr. Combs is still free. 
And then Mr. Combs attempts to pass off Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. Now we at the Cuba now. Mr. Jones believes that. He believes that. And it gets darker. I'm not even done yet. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs was grooming him to pass him off to his friends. Like he was, Mr. Combs was grooming Mr. Jones as his own male prostitute. That's what he was doing. He did it to many people. This fear became reality. Or Mr. Combs, because you know, Mr. Jones like, okay, I know what you're doing now, man. What the hell? Or Mr. Combs introduced Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding freaking Jr. While they were on Mr. Combs' yacht. So they had on a yacht, somewhere docked somewhere, away from civilization apparently with these underage ex-workers and Chris Brown in the house. And he introduced him to Cuba. Like, here's Cuba. During the introduction, Mr. Combs suggested that Cuba get to know Mr. Jones better. He then left him alone in a makeshift studio on the yacht. Like, hey, I can introduce you to Cuba. Yay, babe. Beza, here's Cuba. Woohoo. And guess what? He's still free. So here's, the, these are pictures of that, not, that night with the godfather, Mr. Combs. And Cuba Gooding Jr. Before the assault. As evidence, because he has video, but these are still shots. Screenshots. They are below as well. Cuba Gooding Jr. Remember, he drunk some of dealing on liquor, so he's high and don't know what the hell's going on with him either. Begin touching and groping and fondling, like, hey, boy, what's up, what's up? Touching his inner thigh and his drawing, you know, his buttocks, like, hey, what's up, what's up? Let's go in one of these rooms and do something. Hey, you know, it's right over there, let's do it. Mr. Jones was extremely uncomfortable, proceeded to lean away from his, Mr. Gooding Jr., he rejected his advances, and Mr. Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. He kept going, like, come on, dog, what's up, what's up? He's high. He's, I mean, he's, he's under ecstasy. It's amazing how he's under ecstasy and he becomes attracted to men. Not the opposite, but men. Interesting. So the following is a screenshot of this encounter. The writer is in possession of the video. Okay. So here's... This picture I had on my life. So this is him making advances. You see where his hand is? You see that? And you can see that Q was obviously high. I don't even think you know what he's doing. But I just find it weird that he becomes high off these drugs. And he becomes attracted to men. Not whatever. So you can see him with his hands touching his inner thigh. You see that? There it is. And he's working. See, he's working right now. He got his studio. He's working. So throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was under an implied work for hire agreement. Yeah. He was not compensated for this living, this nightmare with Combs or for the songs he produced, as you can see him producing it right there. As evidence, he was listed as producer for the following songs in the Love's the Love album, final release, Deliver Me, and so on and so forth with those. Now, Mr. Combs and defendants LR blah, 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 from Mr. Jones' work product. <clears throat> now, these are just um, UMG Records, University Musical Group. The, 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 these are just initials for those um, record companies and stuff. That's all that is. Now, Mr. Jones' work product, yeah, they failed to compensate Mr. Jones for his work and nightmare. As a result, Mr. Combs, the defendant, da, 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 were all unjustly enriched at the expense of Mr. Jones. Yeah. So, let me read that again. As a result, Mr. Combs and defendants LR, M MR, and da 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 were all unjustly enriched at the expense of Mr. Jones. So, they practically used him and then threw him away. Had no intentions on paying him jack squat for nothing. He lucky he got money at all. They just used him. They... Brought him in, got him geeked up on the what ifs and I can do's. Got a huge amount of blackmail material on him. It was like, okay, you can go. You say something, you're done. And that's how he that's that's how it goes down with Mr. Combs, apparently. He had no intentions on paying him at all. 
So Mr. Jones attempted to work with Mr. Combs to secure his publishing and royalty rights for the work he completed on the Love album. Mr. Combs only offered Mr. Jones $29,000 for all this bullshit for 13 months, thousands of hours of work, and nine songs that made it to the Love album. Ironically, Mr. Jones was willing to take $50,000. Okay. His publishing and royalties. Mr. Combs' self-serving greed would not allow him to pay. So he was like, how about I just pay for my royalties so I can get full compensated for my work? Okay. He even added, he, Mr. Jones even said I'll add an additional 21000 Yeah. But we're talking about Sean Combs here. He's the godfather. He's a god of gods. Okay. He... That wasn't happening. It says Mr. Gooding Jr. has his story history. He, yeah, if you look on Wikipedia, Mr. Gooding, he has a whole history of this kind of stuff. Okay? He has a whole history of this stuff. Exactly. Empty promises. Exactly. So Mr. Combs' deceptive business practices became so bad that Mr. Jones was left with no choice other than to make public plea on social media for Mr. Combs to pay him for his work. Like, I'm only, I only want to get paid for my work. I'm not asking for all the bull crap you put me through. This paid me for my work. So he went on social media. This is what he said. You, a thousand, okay, you plan. I'm in the studio. He said, LOL, you a 100% liar and ridder. Good luck. Numbers still still run into. The point is, he tried to deliver his story and it never happened. So this is Deep Frost. Taylor threatening Mr. Jones. Remember I told you those uh, initials there? Well, that's not one initials, but I'm just saying. This is Defrost here. Okay? That's Defrost, Taylor threatening Mr. Jones. Defrost works with uh, Mr. Combs. So they are kind of like in the whole producing whatever thing. So that's what that is. You can look up Defrost on the internet if you want to know who he is. See, you see? Stevie J and Love Records, A.R. Defrost Taylor. So they in business of producing and stuff like that. He's a partnership with Stevie J. So that's who Defrost is. They're all cool with um, Sean Combs, if you want to know who that is. Okay, Mr. Combs uses power and influence to threaten and intimidate Mr. Jones. Remember, when Mr. Combs don't get his way, what does he always do? He starts threatening. He goes to threatening. What's the pattern again? If y'all been listening, he goes to threatening. To promising, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm saying that right. He goes to promising, he goes to uh, threatening, and uh, then he goes to cannibalism or something like that. I guess he skipped the promising stuff because he's not giving him anything, so he just goes straight to threatening. Now, according to Mr. Jones, Mr. Combs is what was, I mean, he was very forceful and demanding. Mr. Combs does not take no for an answer. You don't say no to him. And would often threaten, remember where I told you, he threatened to eat his face? Earlier, remember he said, I'll eat your face. I'll kill this and I'll kill that. Normally he go promise in the world, but he don't want to give him no money. So he skipped the promise in the world part. And now he's just going to threatening and body harm and cannibalism. So he threatened to flip bodily harm on Mr. Jones and Mr. Jones did not comply with his demands. Like you either do what I say, I'm going to kill you. As detail above, Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones' face. Remember, he goes to his face. So. On another occasion, while standing in Mr. Combs' bedroom, Mr. Jones is forced to watch as Mr. Combs display his guns. Now, remember, he's, he's trying to scare the hell out of him. So, remember, you got to think like Sean Combs. He think he's a god. He think he's the mafia boss. Exactly. Begging, promising, and threatening. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So, now, he think he's a god. He is the god of all gods. So, what did he do? Come in my bedroom. I need to show you something, dog. I mean, think like him. Think like some egotistical, narcissistic, crazy person. Come in my room. I got something for you, dog. I got something for you. So he invited Mr. Jones to his bedroom. He displayed all his guns and bragged about getting away with shooting people. Like, I shot this person. And I shot that person. So Mr. Combs shared that he was responsible for the shooting in a nightclub in New York City with rapper Shine. Y'all remember that? So he's bragging. He's filling himself. Laying out the Uzis, laying out the guns, laying out the rifles or whatever. I shot this person and I shot this person and I got away with it. Yeah. I even shot rapper Shine and got away with it. Had my girl hiding in her purse and then had her put the 
freaking gun under the car seat and got away with it. Bam! So Diddy, former bodyguard, accuses a rapper of snitching on Shine over the 1999 shooting. This is when he was um, dating Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez can put uh, Shine Combs to jail if she want to. Because she was there. But we know she's not saying a damn thing. So he shared the artist Mr. Combs' girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, a.k.a. J-Lo, carried the gun into the club for him and passed it to him. Passed him the fucking gun. And then got into an altercation with another individual. So she gave him the gun. But she got away scot-free. Jennifer Lopez is... This is illegal. She can go to jail for this. Even though it was a gazillion years ago. Okay? But she can go to jail for this. So she was adding a bedding. Carrying a, a concealed weapon. And didn't say nothing. Nothing. So she can put him in jail if she want to, but she's not. She know the truth and haven't said a damn thing. And have no intentions on saying anything. So, Sean Combs, Jennifer, this is the headline. Y'all already know the headlines to this already. Sean Combs, Jennifer Lopez arrested after NY shooting. The shooting in Chalice Recording Studios confirmed Mr. Joan, Mr. Combs statement. So, this, yeah, bam. Here it is. But guess what? Sean Combs is still free. These statements reinforce Mr. Jones' fear of Mr. Combs and straighten Mr. Combs' dominion and control of Mr. Jones. So he's laying out these Uzis. I shot this person. I shot this person. I did this. Da, 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 da. Do you want to be next? I would be terrified. Because he'd get away with all this stuff. Damn. Mr. Jones was terrified of Mr. Combs. He felt like... <sighs> I can't tell him no. I mean, goddamn. Mr. Combs consistently made it clear that he has immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement. Apparently he do. He's still free. Mr. Combs made it clear that his head of security, Fahim Muhammad, Mr. Muhammad, yeah, has the power to make people and problems disappear. So you either do it or call my boy Muhammad and you be gone. That's like other producers who recently died and no one knows what happened. They used to hang with him, too. I think one of them had a baby mama. Yeah. They conveniently took a picture of Mr. Combs. Yeah, that famous rapper. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Yeah. So, he has the power to make people disappear. Call so-and-so, so-and-so, you be dead. While Mr. Jones is in the bedroom with Mr. Combs laying out all these weapons. Terrified. This has been a nightmare of a gig so far. So Mr. Combs instructs, this is Fahim Muhammad who, who can make people disappear. Yeah. So Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad. If you want something done, contact Mr. Muhammad. He's, he, he's my cleanup man. That's what he do. If I want Cassie to go off to the islands to heal up her face after I beat her, you know what? Call Muhammad. Let's get it, or call his uh gist lane for that for harm girl, where the hell her name is, who was sitting cross side with Jay Z. Call her, make it done. So, upon information and believe that Mr. Hammond spoke with the LAPD after G was shot at CRS, the LAPD was in CRS. This is the recording studio, okay, and witnessed the blood in the restroom. Remember that blood in the restroom that I showed before, okay, and they went with the bogus claim and the shooting G occurred. Remember, he got. You remember he, uh, uh, Justin Combs, I believe it was Justin Combs and Sean Combs shot him in the bathroom. You remember that? <clears throat> and he told Jones to say he got shot during a drive-by shooting outside the studio. And they lied to law enforcement. This is not, this is the aftermath on how that got played. So upon information and belief, Mr. Combs spoke with LAPD after G was shot at CRS. The LAPD was in CRS and witnessed the blood in the restroom. And they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred. This is, remember, he was curled up in the fetal position in the bathroom. And there's pictures of this. But again, Sean Combs is free. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connection with law enforcement. So he called this cleanup man, Muhammad. Dog, I did this. Clean this up, man. I got you. I hit you. I know. I know. A couple of twenties. I don't know, man. Just do something. Okay, I got you. I got you. Mr. Jones had no reason to believe 
disbelieve Mr. Combs, I should have said, as he had seen firsthand through the shooting of fucking G. And not to mention all the other crazy shit that's been happening. I feel like I'm living a nightmare right now. And the subsequent silence of the LAPD and the LAPD now. And the FBI, because he's still free. And the media that Mr. Combs indeed had the power to harm him. Because again, Shaq Combs is free. And the LAPD, I mean, they had no evidence like this when they locked up freaking R. Kelly and Bill Cosby. They got videos and freaking screenshots and Shaq Combs is still fucking free. So the LAPD spent hours in this recording studio after the shooting of G, yet there was no freaking arrest. Mr. Joe witnessed the LAPD in the restroom above do all this questioning. There was in the restroom. They actually saw the fucking blood in the restroom. Are you hearing me, people? <laughs> so the LAPD was in the restroom and saw the blood. And they pushed the story of him being shot outside the fucking studio. Are we hearing this correctly? So the morning after the shooting, Mr. Jones and several others arrived at the CRSG's blood. Yeah, uh-huh. Was still on the floor of the restroom. And Mr. Combs hired a cleaning crew to clean it up. So he had LAPD to clear up his crimes. And he had a cleaning crew to clean up the aftermath of his many bloody escapades. So, yeah, G could have been shot. Yeah, he could have. Now we get into defendants Ethiopia, Hapernavium, Lucian Charles Grange, Motown Records, Love Records, Universal. You remember initials? I was telling you that's what those are. Okay. Aiding and abetted and profited off Sean Combs' Rico Enterprise. Now, are we down to Rico, baby? We're almost done. I'm going to try to breeze through this. Mr. Jones, because seeing defendant Grange visiting. Mr. Combs home in Miami, Florida, in Los Angeles, California. Now, TikTok is one of the most important short video platforms in the world. It has had significant impact on the spread of global music. Today, it is believed that the artists are paying more and more attention to producing suitable disinformation of TikTok due to fail contracted. Da, da, da. So, some artists are taking their music off of TikTok, but they're going to end up putting it back because if they want shit, they shit to sell, they need to put it on TikTok. Stop being stupid and put it back up there. But that's what that is. Now, according to Mr. Jones, whenever defendant Grange visited Mr. Combs at his home, it would be in the evening, like a vampire or a demon. Or actually, demon is, well, I'll explain that later, but the proper turn is gin, not demon, but whatever. And he and Mr. Combs would disappear for hours in Mr. Combs' bedroom. Let me say that over. According to Mr. Jones, whenever defendant Grange visited, think about this. According to Mr. Jones, whenever Defendant Grange visited Mr. Combs at his home. Y'all know who Defendant Grange is. I put it in the video. My last live video. Yeah. Defendant Grange. Yeah. Uh-huh. If you need to scroll up and look at my live video, go ahead. Visiting Mr. Combs at his home. I think he's a Caucasian guy. Okay. Yeah. It will be in the evening. And he and Mr. Combs would disappear for hours in Mr. Combs' bedroom. Not in an office or in a patio having, you know, whiskey shots, looking at the horizon, discussing business with cigars or whatnot. No. In the bedroom. Now, Defendant Grange sponsored and attended several love album listening parties at Mr. Combs' home in Los Angeles. These parties were sponsored by Defendant, you know, da, 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 the labels. As evidence above, these parties had ex-workers. Remember, every party has ex-workers. It has underage girls present. It has ecstasy. It has all this at all of his parties. This is how you get down. Isn't that what Cat Williams said? During these parties, Defendant Grange knew or should have known that Mr. Combs was drugging the attendees through lace bottles of Dillion tequila and Ciroc vodka. He had two separate vodkas. One for the elite people that is not drugged, and one for the people he just don't give two flops about and want them to, you know, get crazy. It is no secret that Mr. Combs has specific bottles of alcohol designated for females and other bottles designated for his staff, his artists, and himself. Then I just say that. This fact was detailed by former artist and bodyguard of Mr. Combs. So other people 
confirmed this. Matter of fact, Ray J said he went to one of Sean Combs' party. He had a drink. He don't remember anything after that. As a sponsor of these events, Defendant Grange had a duty and obligation. I said this in my live show, last live show. He had a duty and obligation to ensure the ex-workers and underage girls were not present. But they were present. And Mr. Combs was not spiking alcohol and date raped up, but he was. So apparently his duty was not to make sure that didn't happen. His duty was to make sure it did happen and make sure it stayed within the confines of this party. Now, on YouTube channel, the Art Dialogue, former bodyguard Gene Dill exposed Mr. Combs' pill mixing method used to spike cranberry juice and orange juice, which is easy to spike anything because the taste, those tastes together are so strong you can't taste nothing. Now, according to Mr. Dill and Mr. Combs, will place ecstasy and other date drugs in these drinks and juices. Yeah. On a YouTube called The Art of Dialogue, former artist Mark Curry exposed Mr. Combs spiking bottles of Moet champagne, you know, those big old bottle of Moet you see all the time in Jay Z little videos and parties too, in the VIP section of nightclubs. Mr. Combs would have a set of Moet champagnes for his artists and a set for women. He has different sets for his, his uh, allies, people who he don't want to mess up the partnership with, and another set for women. He has some respect for women. Who gives a damn about women? Unless you are the partner of one of his allies, he don't give two fine fees about you. And that's just real. Now, this had to be removed from TikTok. This comes from alleged lack of protection TikTok detects to ensure UMG artists' rights and creativity preserve as well fair compensation. On the contrary, it has been alleged that the renewal failed due to UMG owns financial agenda and putting their interests first before the artists. This move was has cost artists affected. It is just their royalty crap. Who cares? Anyway. This writer has spoken with several former employees of Mr. Combs who witnessed defending Karam. Remember that Karam chick who was sitting courtside with freaking Jay-Z? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And striking her stab to lace. Listen to what I'm saying. This is the lady who was sitting courtside just the other day with freaking Jay-Z. She instructed her staff to lay champagne dealing on Ciroc liquor bottles with ecstasy and other illicit drugs, but Jay-Z is still cool with her, and Beyonce is still married to this man. Whatever. Makes me believe the drug rumors about her. Now, Mr. Jones recalls sitting defending Hypernavium visiting Mr. Combs' home in Miami, Florida, in Los Angeles, California. Now, according to Mr. Jones, whenever defending Hypernavium, that's that Utopia girl, the dark-skinned girl I showed you earlier, Visiting Mr. Combs at his home, it will be in the evening, and she and Mr. Combs again would disappear for hours in his bedroom. So he's not meeting these people in the kitchen. He's not meeting these people in the den. He's not meeting these people in his office. He's not even meeting them on the back in the patio by the pool. He's meeting them in the bedroom, and they'd be in there for hours. First with a man, a Caucasian man, and now with this girl. Now, according to Mr. Jones, defendant Hapernanian visited Mr. Combs and defendant CRS during Mr. Combs' writing camp. So she visited him during the camp, too. And now, defendant Hapernanian sponsored and attended several love album listening parties. So she sponsored a lot of his album, his li album listening parties. You know, home in Los Angeles, California. These parties were sponsored by... Ba -da 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 -da. Now, during these parties, defendant Hapernanian knew or should have known that Mr. Cohn was drugging the attendees through lace bottles and dealing on tequila and Ciroc vodka. As a sponsor of these parties, defendant Hapternabium had a duty and obligation to ensure again that these one the underage girls there and drinks weren't being spiked. But apparently her and her little boy, Grange, didn't have the responsibility to make sure they weren't there, but to make sure they were there and they contained it the perimeters of that party. Because they did the total opposite. It was doing what Karam did. Remember I told you, defendant Christina Karam is the Ghislaine Maxwell to Sean Combs, Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, so this is Karam and Diddy. So that's who they are. She makes sure they're doing their job, and he's the Epstein. Now, according to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Mr. Combs, he witnessed Mr. Combs display the stupid gums in his bedroom, closet, Miami, Florida, yada, yada, yada. And he said he, you know, apparently in questionable individuals dressed in all black. So he witnessed these display of guns 
from his barraging closet in Miami, Florida, Los Angeles, to questionable individuals dressed in all black. Only private security FBI agents are known to dress in all black. Now, according to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived in the travel, 13 months of nightmare, travel Mr. Combs, he went as defendant Karam, openly ordered her assistance to keep Mr. Combs high off gummies and pills. So he's like, you have to keep them, you, you got to keep giving them this stuff. I mean, just, just, this is, please. When he, 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 when he started getting crazy, give him one of these gummies. He started getting nuts. Give him one of these pills. If that don't work, give him an ex-worker. It don't matter if a male or female. This is what you have to do to keep him calm. To stay alive. Hell. Fuck calm. To stay alive. So. Defending crime required all employees. From the butler. To the chief. To the housekeepers. To walk around with a pouch. A fanny pack filled with all of this stuff. Cocaine, GHP, ecstasy, marijuana, gummies, 2C, I'm assuming. I don't know what that is. A pink drug that's a combination of ecstasy and cocaine. Uh-huh. So it was important to defend Karam to have Mr. Combs' drug of choice immediately ready when he asked for it. So remember I told you, keep you got you have to do this. So defending Karam ordered ex-workers and prostitutes for Mr. Combs. The Fender Crime Order distribute ecstasy, cocaine, all this stuff for him. Mushroom, whatever. And his celebrity guests who are present on his rented yacht in his home. So this is considered an appetizer. This is considered a delicacy. Have a glass of champagne and drugs. Just live it up. <laughs> this is what he's offering his guests. <laughs> on oh, multiple occasions, the Fender Crime forced Mr. Jones to carry Mr. Combs this pouch. Like, okay, now it's time for you to carry the pouch of supplies to keep him calm. Here is the pouch. Exactly. Yep, exactly. Very nasty. I don't know. He probably was afraid to die, um, Maria. Okay, so on multiple occasions, yeah, he, yeah. So as the chief of staff defended Karam, who was sitting again courtside with freaking Jay-Z, who's married to Beyonce... Okay, and if I was the Beyonce dad and learning all this stuff, I would be like, what the hell are you doing? But we are talking about this when her dad was around. We have freaking Tina Knowles who's around now, who dumps spouses when the money start running out. But whatever. Defending Crown was instrumental in organizing and executing the RICO enterprise. Defending Crown had the following individual execute following tasks. Stevie J, he was a recruiter for ex-workers and attendees. And the participants in a bunch of freak offs. Justin Combs solicited the prostitute underage sex workers and would also engage in freak offs. Brendan Paul works as Mr. Combs' mule. He acquires distribute distribute Mr. Combs, you know, drugs and guns. There it is. He has a recording. He has a video of Stevie J and all this stuff. He has all this. But yet, Sean Combs is still free. This is Brendan Paul. Remember, Brendan Paul's job is to acquire the guns and the drugs and stuff. So there it is. See that? Bam. Bam. Okay, so work works alongside Brendan, acquires a just blah, 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 blah. He carries money and pays for guns. Blah, 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 we know that. So he's probably doing an exchange right there. There it is. Bam. Okay. And you got Mui Bond. He hires ex workers and tennis, also a free call. So we have Mui doing that. Okay. Mui. Okay. This is Mui on Thanksgiving. So it's not a family affair, it's an orgy affair. This is Mui. On Thanksgiving. Yeah. Mr. Combs funding his affiliation of guns and speeding through here. Um, secure drugs and distribute blah, blah, blah. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of violence, threatening to eat, plaintiff's face. We get that. We get that. We get that. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of isolation from the music and entertainment industry. Parading power for music. So this is what he does. Remember, he does this. If you don't do what I say, you're not going to get this. You're not going to get that. Promise him the world. So remember, he the fake promise. He made a quarter million. He offered the producer of Grammy Award year. Da, 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 da. He promised all that. But it was just a promise. He had no intentions of following it through. Mr. Combs, it says, is allowed to wreak havoc. And nothing happens to him, as we know. So, 
While leaving a trial with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones discovered that Mr. Combs had hidden cameras everywhere in, in all the parts of his homes. So he recorded everything. Mr. Jones believed that Mr. Combs had recorded his defendant Lucian Charles Graves, if the open hampers and opium, as well as other celebrities and music label executives, including what I heard Clive Davis and some politicians and athletes, like, you know, another athlete that loves hanging with them. What's his name? It's, he's named after a Bible. Yeah, him. So upon information to believe that these individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent and is the case with the homosexual ex tape with Stevie J, which I showed you a picture of provided Mr. Combs and Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones and Mr. Combs, possessions, a compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak off parties. So he has video evidence, recordings, all of that. In his disposal, he's like freaking huge Hefner. Upon information and belief due to the treasure of 12 of evidence he has in his possession, Mr. Combs believes that he is above the law and is untouchable considering he's still free he is. So upon information and belief, Mr. Combs employs Jose Gruz as his IT director. This writer has spoken to several former employees of Mr. Combs to confirm that Jose Cruz is the gatekeeper to all the Mr. Combs recordings. So get Jose Cruz to talk and Spill it all. If I was Jose Cruz, I'll blow all this crap up for real. It would be all over the media. I'm not going to hell for you. Fuck that. Fuck that. I will seriously leak all this shit. So upon information to believe Jose Cruz intentionally hides behind the camera and from social media and the internet, he's also an internet geek. So he can hack some stuff as well. Now, now due to all the incriminating acts, he was required to record for Mr. Combs. So he's the key guy they need to get at. But he'd be dead before he released something or it comes. So, first cause of action. Conduct the participation in RICO Enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity, violation of racketeer influence and corrupt organization, act code, da 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 blah, 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 blah. And all these names, and Mr. Jones incorporates by in reference all proceedings, paragraphs, re-alleges them as it, it's set forth fully in here. And we go as we spawn da, 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 da. So it says here, scamming through here. Um, the respondents appear collective failed to adequately monitor, warn, and supervise the act of Sean Combs, Justin Combs, and Christina Karam. Okay, so Chris, let me go back. Christina Karam, as they were acting in their cap capacities as a respondent superior collectiveness, employees, when they, okay, yeah, we know that one. Defendant are individuals and entities. I think it just pretty much sum up everything we just saw. And these are just like the laws that they've broken. There's so many defendants have unlawfully increased their profits, luring producers, you know, blackmail. So this is just them explaining all the, you know, all the stuff that they were, you know, um, illegally doing. The members of Weak Enterprise all share a common purpose to enrich themselves financially and sexually at the expense of producers, musicians, da 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 da. Um, as set forth here, and defendants beneficial financially from their scheme to defraud plaintiffs. So they just listen to all the laws that they broke here. So this is all part of the laws that they broke. All part of the laws that they broke. It goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. So defendant has committed multiple acts of mail fraud and violation. Okay, so he did that. Defendants voluntarily and intentionally defies the person in the scheme. Remember, he did that in scheme to defraud plaintiffs out of money. Remember, he did that specifically. So these are all the laws he broke. Defendant committed multiple acts of wire fraud and violation and furthermore enterprise. This is all the laws he broke. Where our plaintiff requests the quarter, da 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 da. And it says granting plaintiff statutory common law and punitive damages applicable pre and post judgment interest. Yeah, this legal jargon, second case of action, essay, da 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 da. And then third case of action, California by standard neglection. Or negligent, I'm sorry. Infliction of emotional distress. You know, Mr. Combs and da 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 da. And fourth cause of action, XA against Jane Doe, young Miami cousin. Da 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 da. And then and so on and so forth. This, all the rest is just literally legal jargon. Okay? That's all it is. See, it goes on 
and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is crazy. And that is it. That is it. We are done, people. We are done. Wrapping up the last live show of the Truth Show. Live shows. It's going to be on Twitch. Maybe TikTok. Patreon, I get that paid for because I got to pay for that. And that's it. Because I'm not getting paid on this fucking platform. I'm tired of breaking my back and not getting paid. So I hope you enjoy. Share, share, share. Love you all for staying out duration of this nightmare. I'm losing my voice. This is a fucking nightmare. I'm going to need a drink after this. Oh my gosh. This is a fucking nightmare. I'm going to leave the link to this below. And you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for being participants. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you, all of you. I love you all. And don't forget to sign up for my page from the link is below.